Thank you, Alex, and thank you to Science Water and Columbia University. I think this is, it has been a great day. We've talked all day about change. Uh, we've talked for the last 20 years about change in the water sector. How do we imagine that change? What does that change look like? Uh, we talk about quantum leaps. We talk about uh, step function changes. What might that look in the space? I've been in the space 20 years as a lawyer, an investor, an advisor, a management executive, and it's hard to imagine what that change might look like. Uh, we talked all day about we're just at the beginning, the nascent steps of a, of a, of a um, accelerated change that's necessary in light of a whole bunch of reasons. I'm proud to introduce Emma Dannemiller. Emma's been in the space for a while uh, with Bechtel and others. She's now at ANOAA. Uh, for those of you that don't know of ANOAA, she'll explain it to you. I won't steal any of her thunder. But it's, it's that model that we all look to as far as what the future might look like. Um, I can remember when I, when about six months or so, I was in uh, Saudi Arabia, and I was excited to learn about Neom and Anoa and what's going on in the northern part or the middle part of uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And when I met the team at Anoa, it was like literally meeting a rock star. I was flabbergasted. I was just eager to learn more. And I think what you're going to find here with uh, Emma's presentation is what that future might look like. So up to you, Emma. Thank you all very much. I'm wondering how to change the slides. Oh, the slide, yeah. The, uh, just press the green button. Okay, thank you. And the red color. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Emma Dannemiller. I'm the program manager for Capital Works for Inoa Water, and I'm also the responsible for delivering the sustainability strategy, which is uh, incredibly exciting. I really appreciate you uh, coming to listen to, to the story of Neom and Inoa. I've had a fantastic day today, amazing conversations, and it's just so exciting. I'm going to tell you about... Um, what we're doing in the space of circularity and sustainability, a little bit about NEOM and a little bit more about INOA and some of our uh, capital projects and how we're approaching the future. So NEOM, if you haven't heard of it, is a new region of Saudi Arabia. The word, the name NEOM means NEO from the Greek, new, and mustakbal from the Arabic for future, M for future, the new future. This is where I'm living with thousands of other people to deliver a vision established by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to build a sustainable region and a sustainable way of life in the desert. Neom is uh, about the size, I had to look this up because the, the slides usually say the size of Belgium, but this is actually the, uh, uh, equivalent to the size of Maryland. This is the total uh, surface area of Neom. It's located in the northwest corner of Saudi Arabia on the Gulf of Aqaba. This gives it uh, quite a, uh, an important position. Something like 13% of world trade travels through the Red Sea, so that's uh, very exciting. And it's in the process of establishing a friendly and progressive regulatory environment. NEOM is looking for international partners, it's looking for business, and it's, it wants people to come and work from all over the world. And right now I can say there's probably 100 different, different nationalities working in NEOM, and something like 45 in, in, in Noah Water. It's, it's quite amazing, people from all over the world. One of the important points to note on this slide, and something that's different from many legacy systems, is that INOA will be run entirely on renewable energy. So this makes a big difference when we come to thinking about water, plant, and infrastructure. So just bear that in mind. This region has extraordinary solar and wind potential, so we will be building uh, solar and wind farms. 95% of NEON will be retained as nature region, so pristine desert. It's incredibly beautiful and has amazing beaches and coral reefs. The remaining 5% is where 
cognitive cities will be built, sustainable destinations such as the line, which you might have seen videos of on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't, please look it up, you'll be amazed. Oxygen, which is the industrial city in the south of Neom. Trojena, a development in the beautiful mountains. And Sindala, an island. It's also worth mentioning, really, that Saudi is, uh, is open. Neom is open for business. We're actively looking. Uh, Inoa is actively looking for partners, people to engage with. So please uh, go to LinkedIn, go to our website, and uh, reach out. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Inoa is a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Neom, and it has three business lines. Energy, this is production of renewable energy and transmission and sale of renewable energy. The water team where I work, and a new hydrogen business. I'm primarily going to talk about water because we're here to talk about water, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about the synergies between water and our energy business and water and the hydrogen business. When I was asked to participate in a conference about rethinking water, I spent some time thinking about water and how I could best explain some of the things that we're trying to do in Inoa to best tell our uh, story and our narrative. And I came up with these four characteristics. And I've heard an incredible conversation about these things today, with the possible exception of the hydrogen dioxide part. But, um, but when I put this together, it was several days before the big uh, event, uh, tragic event in Libya. And I realized that these incredible beneficial aspects of water also have potentially uh, unhelpful and destructive potential water. And we were talking earlier about that with the um, insurance companies as well. Um, there is a, down, a great downside to, to engaging with water. Or... So <clears throat> firstly, uh, water is life. This might seem rather obvious if you live in a place when there's plenty of rain. I was walking around uh, New York yesterday and it was absolutely torrential. But we're living in a desert. Water is incredibly valuable in the desert. And it's often, and I'm sure most of you would agree, undervalued. One of the things that we're looking at, and one of the pieces of work that we just started, and unfortunately, it's not finished yet, so I can't share it with you, is to uh, establish the total economic value of water in Neom. What is a cubic meter wor of water worth when you're trying to build a community in the desert? Um, so when that work is done, we'll, we'll try and share it, and maybe next year I'll, I'll, I'll be able to come back and tell you more about it. The other feature of water, of course, is that it's circular by nature, and we are trying to emulate that. This is a big part of our philosophy, both in energy and in water. What is water doing? We're bringing water from the sea and we're bringing it onto the land. This is the cycle of water. Water is also a universal solvent. It transports materials, and we've talked a lot, uh, there was a fabulous panel earlier on talking about water reuse. From the point of view of Inoa water, the materials inside the, the water that we're dealing with, biosolids from wastewater, salts and metals from seawater, uh, are being brought towards us by the water flows from our plant. And this is uh, uh, very important for us in, in our business model. Water also stores and carries energy. The kinetic, the movement of water is energy. We're able to capture some of that with, with uh, turbines. This is the nature of pump storage, of course, and also thermal energy. Um, a lot of development going on in this area. We're engaging in some district cooling, and I'll come back to that. And finally, of course, water is a molecule of hydrogen dioxide. This is a feedstock for our green hydrogen plant. This, this image here is... Uh, the photo is an image of one of our most beautiful wadis in the north of Neom, called Wadi Taib. And that silver thread down the middle of it is the, pretty much the only permanent water, I think, that we have in Neom, permanent surface water. I've not seen any other water. And this water runs for most of the year. Anyway, that's Wadi Taib. Our sustainability vision is to achieve the most ambitious sustainability targets for a water sector globally, going beyond circularity to maximize resilience and prosperity 
for the environment, the economy, and society. And I hope as I go through some of this material that you'll see that we're really striving to achieve it. This is not, these are not uh, glib statements. It's actually something that fundamentally underpins our business strategy and our plan for water. On the right-hand side of the slide are the statements that come out of our sustainability strategy. We have to deliver financially uh, sustainable services. Water service in NEOM is not subsidized. We have to be able to remain in uh, a viable business to continue providing water. We will also be carbon negative and climate resilient. This is obviously important. We have to provide safe, reliable, and affordable services to our customers, sanitation, potable water, in the desert, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in following slides, we have to be highly efficient. And I've heard a lot of conversations through the day talking about efficiency. This is absolutely fundamental to delivering water in the desert, and our services must be integrated. We are water positive. We are bringing water into this region that doesn't currently exist. The, the uh, available water in Neon right now, there is some groundwater and there is some pumped extraction, but the economy is very small, some small-scale fishing, some grazing of camels and goats, and some small fruit farms, dart dates and, and mangoes and such. That is not enough to sustain the plans that Neom, Neom has for population and industrial and economic growth. We have to provide all of the water in Neom. We have to provide water for all of our customers, agriculture, industry, people. We also have to provide water for the environment. There is a very large regreening initiatives going on across Saudi Arabia, um, and also in Neom, um, replanting of trees and re-establishment of, of greenery, reintroduction of uh, once wild animals like the oryx. Um, and if you look that up on the, uh, on, on the web, you'll find uh, wonderful stories about the baby oryxes. And of course, we have to provide inclusive and accountable services because we are a water utility and we're accountable to our customers as well as our um, regulator. Oops. Just before I move off this image. Just behind the palm trees, you can just see it, is the Red Sea. That is where our water is coming from. All of our water is coming from the Red Sea. So, desalination. We aim to provide, as I said, all of our water from desalination plants. We have an existing plant just south of Neon, which was a legacy asset which we inherited. We're expanding it and bringing it up to full capacity, but it's not as sufficient to deliver enough water for, for the whole of Neon. Now we are building a new plant, state of the art, uh, high performance reverse osmosis, and we expect something like 65% recovery rates, which is quite impressive. It will be built in a modular form as demand uh, grows. We are able to increase the capacity of the plant. Remember that I said we were using renewable energy. This is really important because desalination has a little bit of a bad reputation when it comes to energy consumption. So yes, it is very intensive uh, in energy to push water through a membrane, it has uh, typically a very large carbon footprint, but if we can address that and use renewable energy, we deal with one of the, the sort of big negatives of desalination. The other negative, historical ne negative or current negative of desalination is the production of brine. Typically, brine is seen as a waste product, a byproduct of desalination, and it's put back into the sea. This is, this is quite typical practice in, in most locations. However, we're not able to do that. We have a policy in NEOM of zero liquid discharge. We cannot put water back into the sea. We cannot discharge treated uh, uh, effluent or, or recycled water. It, the same goes for brine. It's too destructive to a very pristine coral reef environment in the Red Sea. And we'll come on to the brine uh, uh, in a little bit. But on the right-hand side of this slide, you can see um, the various customers that we have for our water supply. The point I want to make with, with this slide, I wouldn't worry too much about the numbers, it's more to do with the distribution between our customers. Population demand for water is a relatively small percentage of our uh, uh, d of demand. If we take um, population and industry, this is the water that will effectively go into recycling. The most of the other water will go to, with the exception of the um, district cooling water, will end up being put directly onto the land for landscaping and irrigation. There is no rainfall in Neon. 
And that's quite a significant demand. We entered into an agreement with Veolia and Itochu in June last year to deliver our state-of-the-art desalination plant. This is our new plant being built in Oxygen. It's not a standard desalination plant. The challenge is not only to produce high-quality desalinated bulk potable water for consumption, but also to produce a very high-quality brine that will subsequently go into our brine processing industry. Desalination is very expensive. Typical losses in the region, in the GCC region, are over 30%. These are non-revenue losses before we get to the meter. This water's just lost. It's produced, it uh, consumes energy, it takes plant capacity, and it disappears into the ground somewhere. Inoa Water aims to achieve ultra-low losses of less than 3% on the network. This would be a global benchmark. Current best performer in the world is Singapore, and I think they achieve something like 5%. So we said, hey, we're going we're gonna to beat that. If we can save 30% loss, then we can reduce the capacity of our plant, our pipes, our pumping systems, the energy consumption. So this is, this is uh, very, very significant. Lot, uh, the, the, this target is achieved through two main mechanisms. Firstly, through smart infrastructure. We have to be able to monitor the network. We plan to monitor the network. Where, how much water is going into the system? Where's the water coming out? We're able to monitor the quality of it and the volume of it and identify leakage very quickly. The other part to this is that we have to be able to access the pipes very quickly. And we fought uh, quite long and hard to uh, have most of our pipes put into culverts. So this is more costly. Um, it's easier to dig and bury. But if you dig and bury you, and you have a leak, you have to dig it all up again. You dig up the roads and uh, exacerbate the problem. Meanwhile, the water keeps leaking. So the use of smart technology and culverts is really key to achieving less than 3% losses. At the other end of the system, there's more savings to be had. We aim to collect 100% of wastewater so all of that water that goes into buildings, the, pop, the, the population and the industrial usage that I referred to earlier, which is about 30%, somewhere between maybe 25% of total consumption, can be recovered. And in fact, we are currently recovering um, the water that we, uh, the wastewater that we generate in our camps and take it to uh, the Albada um, processing facility. So we're even now achieving this for our uh, current situation. But this is our plan, 100% collection and treatment. And this will be done locally using various te appropriate technologies depending on location, all the way from nature-based solutions like reed beds to the latest membrane technology. Um, the other exciting thing for us, I think, the important thing for us is that we have such a high demand for water that we know that we can reuse 100% of that treated water that recycled water can be taken to be used uh, quite locally for immediate uh, application to uh, landscaping and in some approved agricultural uses. The water recycling process also has a byproduct, which used to be disposed of, biosolids, uh, either incinerated or, or uh, put into a, a various other uh, landfill, perhaps. We're also able to now we have to deal with that, right? We can't, we can't burn this waste. Desalination and uh, water recycling are areas of uh, intense innovation, and we have a lot of uh, very interesting work going on with partners um, all around the world. So again, if that's your business, please reach out. We'd be very interested to talk to you. So this liquid brine and this liquid biosolid comes towards us in, through our systems, and we have these things that are carried in, in the water, carried towards us, and instead of getting rid of them, we're going to do something with them. This image is probably quite a well-known one. It's a fairly typical open-cast metal mine. On the, that's the one on the left-hand side. The one on the right-hand side is an architect's rendering of our brine processing plant. We like to talk about seawater, brine mining, the brine is full of salts and metals that would originally just have been put back into the sea. Um, this is a fantastic uh, opportunity to uh, 
avoid uh, massive uh, open cast uh, mining. We think that we can start an industrial business to produce salts and metals that is beneficial for the environment, beneficial for NEON's economy, and beneficial for the society. It enables us to achieve our sustainability goals, zero liquid discharge. We're not putting brine back into the sea. Low CO2 emissions because we're re using re renewable energy. And enhancing environmental protection because we're not conducting these very uh, significant mining activities. It's highly attractive to foreign investment. And if there's anybody out there that's interested in these things, again, please, please uh, contact us. It's an important uh, building block for NEOM's strategic autonomy. We are able to produce materials that can immediately go into use, both uh, with, for construction within NEOM and eventually into an export market. We're also, we, we currently have a, a functioning port down in Oxygen, so um, there's a great opportunity there. This is also a key thread for, for Saudi Arabia's diversification, industrial diversification, and um, a really key opportunity for the many, many, many young Saudis. They have a, a, a growing population of young, very educated and enthusiastic people who want to work in um, new and exciting technologies and industries. So this is a win-win for us, really. Some of the metals, some of the products we're talking about, magnesium has multiple uses. We can use it for remineralizing uh, potable water. We, we're producing our own neon brand water, and we're hoping that people will use the tap. This saves us the, uh, the, the overhead of, the, of, of dealing with all those plastic bottles. Plastic uh, or, or drinking water, uh, bottled water, is very popular in the, in the GCC region, and we're trying to um, go back to tap use, but we have to guarantee the quality of that water, and we have to make it fully uh, healthy. Um, sodium chloride, produced in very, very large quantities, Again, highly useful. Uh, we, it's very high uh, quality, uh, high purity sodium chloride used in a lot of industrial processes. Gypsum, plenty of gypsum used all over the world for buildings. Um, there's going to be a, a, a high, very high demand for gypsum in neon as we go uh, through construction. We also produce potassium as a fertilizer. Again, very useful when you're trying to regreen and conduct agriculture in the desert. One of the other features of these brine products, and I alluded to it earlier, because we're producing it with renewable energy, the, there's a significant carbon advantage. Gypsum and magnesium in particular are less than, have less than 5% of the carbon footprint of benchmark uh, traditional mined gypsum and magnesium. We think this is going to be very attractive to, uh, in, in the, to industry particularly those who are uh, wanting to uh, improve their supply chains, green their supply chains, and it gives us a, a, a nice uh, opportunity to engage in the carbon market. So that was the brine. Then we have the biosolids, usually just kind of disposed of. Now we're able to extract aggregate, which is useful for construction. We can produce uh, soil amendment cake, which is very, very useful for us uh, trying to do agricultural work in the desert. And we're also able to produce biogas. The biogas is reused in the plant, and we're able to achieve, achieve basically net zero energy for those recycling, for those biosolid plants. We're also moving towards our targets for net zero waste. So this is uh, incredibly important. Some, these bioresource, uh, uh, these uh, biosolid plants can also um, take other organic waste. So we're, we're able to, to take other um, product as well. Water stores and transports energy. Clearly, if we've got uh, renewable energy. We have challenges with intermittency. We're currently looking at feasibility studies for pumped hydro schemes around NEOM. Um, the water sector will be providing the water, and Inoa Energy will be providing the, uh, the mechanics, if you like. This is uh, uh, so important for us, really. Um, it's very difficult to maintain a fully renewable grid, so pumped hydro, watch this space and see what we do. Um, we expect it to have a positive impact on nature as well, and um, earlier on, Peter Glick was talking about migrating birds. Neons on a flight path. 
And even now the birds are coming down because there's a little bit of grass and there's a little bit of water around. So we are expecting this to be quite attractive to the indigenous animals and also to migrating birds. And lakes are also very attractive to humans. When we go hiking in the desert, it's nice to see some water. We can take children up there from school. The other use for water is district energy. Uh, the main thing I want to say about district energy is uh, it's so much more efficient than air conditioning units, electric air conditioning units. 50% lower primary energy consumption. Uh, this is huge, um, even for renewable energy. And it also has other uh, side benefits for um, grid balancing and all kinds of, those kind of um, opportunities. And finally, water is hydrogen dioxide. NEON launched, NEON and its partners, Aquapower and Air Products, launched the NEON Green Hydrogen Company in May, earlier this year. It's a multi-billion dollar investment using four gigawatts of renewable energy and producing 600 tons a day of green hydrogen. Our job in Inoa Water is to provide the process water. So we provide the water to the plant that is then electrolyzed and turned into hydrogen and oxygen. There's another little bit of industrial symbiosis in here, which, which is a bit fun. We're not just producing the process water, we're also producing the cooling water for the towers. We're using nanofiltrated seawater. It goes into the cooling towers, accesses one gigawatt of uh, thermal energy, which would otherwise be lost to the atmosphere, and it uh, condenses to form brine, which we then take back and put into brine processing. So there's a nice gigawatt of energy there that we're kind of getting for free. So that's, that's in, a, in a very quick nutshell, our infrastructure. There's a lot going on. Uh, we're in the middle of constructing right now. We've got four reservoirs ongoing, hundreds of miles of pipelines, um, desalination plants, it, it's, uh, it's, it's busy. You could probably see some of it on Google Earth, by the way. Um, the other aspect of our work, like I mentioned earlier, we're very much uh, looking to um, engage with academia, with technical experts, with suppliers and with industry, particularly around technologies in desalination, brine, smart water and recycling. We also produced our ESG report, for those of you that are interested in such things, I'm sure some of you are, uh, earlier this year. You can download it from innoa.neon.com. Uh, we think it is a, it sets a benchmark in terms of transparency for reporting. It's very comprehensive, but very easy to read. And I hope that you'll see some, see very clearly from there what our sustainability ambitions are. I'm afraid. I don't have time to show the video. I don't think it's going to work. There's a, a beautiful planet. I think we, we can take a few questions if there are any. From the Could you describe the scale of the constructions going on right now? I think that might give people some, um, at least some touch around the massive amount of uh, investment that's going on and the, the, the size of, of the project. Yes, thank you. Uh, in the water sector, we have um, about a 140 billion SARS worth of work, which includes our brine processing. Uh, it's a, an exchange rate of 3.75, so whatever that is, uh, about 70 billion US. Um, we've got uh, probably about 20 uh, billion SARS worth of work out in, uh, in execution right now. The work for the spine is amazing, the line. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain you can see it on um, Google Earth, all of the um, excavation, the piling. Work has started up in Trojena on building a lake, um, which we have the um, task of delivering water to. Work has started down in Oxygen. The port is now operating. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. 
we've got a lot of work to do over the next two years in the water sector, and um, we've got to get out there first before everyone else because they need the water. So. Thank you very much again. Thank you.